Hello, so you join me here in my 1987 Saab 900. Uh, I've had this car since 2012. Um, was originally a non-turbo, eight-valve, single carburetor, 105 horsepower or something there, not a lot. Uh, the whole idea of me buying it was I wanted it to make it into like a little bit of a sleeper. I was gonna fit the 16-valve uh, turbo engine and the Saab 9000 Trionic 5 engine management system and run it at like low 200 horsepowers and piss off people in fast-ish cars. And uh, yeah, so I did that early 2013 and since then it's been a 16 valve turbo, it runs, it runs stock uh, turbo, it runs a front mount intercooler, full 3 inch exhaust out of the turbo and it's um, not a lot to it, it's quite a standard state of tune really. I uh, dynoed it back in about 2014. It made 235 at the uh, flywheel and 245 foot pound. So, quite a quick car. Over time, it's got slower and slower. It's only quick up in the turbo. That off whoops, Jesus Christ, this thing is slow. Like, if you catch this in the wrong gear, like fifth gear, trying to go up a hill, Jesus Christ, you nearly roll backwards. It's so lazy, and I've, I, I've thought for a good while, I bet it's timing chain related. I bet the timing's slack. The timing chain is so slack, I bet the valve timing's out on it, and that's why it's lazy, because it makes all the right turbo noises. Uh, I've, yeah, that's what I've thought. So I took, I whipped the tension out the other day, and lo and behold, uh, I think Saab says max travel of the timing chain tensioner is 11 mil before you need to change the chain. I'm at 15 mil, right? So it definitely needs to do it. So I've bought a new chain and I'm gonna fit it. And I bet it'll make it faster, but I thought it'll make an interesting video if I dyno it beforehand, do the timing chain and then dyno it after. Now I've got a, a, a friend, uh, Mark Burley of MB Motorsports, who has a dyno. So yeah, so that's where I'm off now. I'm off to my friend Mark Burley's. I'm gonna chuck this on the dyno and I'll see how much power it makes. Then I'm gonna fit a chain, and then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna run it again with the exact same amount of boost, and uh, see if it picks up any power. I, I, it definitely will. And then get uh, another good friend of mine in, and we'll do some uh, live tuning on the dyno, because this has got Saab 9000 Trionic management, which is totally uh, tunable. And we'll turn it up and we'll see how much uh, power it can make. So, I'll see you when I get there.
that's wheel horsepower, the top yeah, one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you've got horsepower there, that's what's measured. Then you've got the engine power, that's what's calculated from the frictional losses. Yeah. And then you've got your torque here with it. And then uh, green's the boost, and yeah. as you can see... What we have here with the boost. Just, a, on that one. just a bleed valve on it, so just... There we are. Yeah, 1.2 bar there. When it comes on boost, uh, just over here, but about 3.3, three, three, something like that. Yeah. And then, and then uh, as we keep going, near the red line, we're down at... Point point seven. Point seven. Yeah, yeah. You keep going, yeah, you're, you're just coming under, but that's just about where the limiter is anyway. Yeah, no. Bit disappointed with that really. I was sort of thinking it might make like 160 horsepower, and I'd put a chain on it, and make loads and boost loads more power, but hoping to be more broken. Yeah, yeah, but it's Same. pretty healthy. <laughs> pretty good. Some high just, just moved the car back, and that is all the oil that's leaked out of it. That's pretty good, I think. This is better than the NX5 from the night before. Yeah. Mm. Right, just got back from the dyno. It made 200 wheel horsepower flywheel that was anywhere between 216 and 221 at the flywheel. We run it multiple times. Made something like 298, just shy of 300 newton meters of torque. That was at 1.2 bar of boost on a manual bleed valve. Um, I robbed the boost solenoid off it for another car a while back, and it's just been on a manual bleed valve since then. The plan is to fit the timing chain and run it again with the manual bleed valve and hopefully it picks up quite a bit of power and then uh, do a bit of tuning with it, uh, put a boost solenoid back on it and uh, tune it for some half decent power. I don't want to get you guys hopes up. I'm not even, I'm not shooting for 300 horsepower. It's way less than that. I'm I'm not going mental. These cars are the gearboxes for these cars. I've got a bit of a reputation for being weak, and uh, I've been lucky with them so far. So I'm not going mental with it. Mid two hundreds. That's all I'm after. In addition to the dyno figures, I've got some acceleration times as well from uh, a draggy. If you know what one of them is, you you know. If you don't, GPS accelerometer basically. Uh, Sinks to an app on your phone and mega accurate acceleration times, 0 to 60, 60 to 100, 100 to 200k, whatever you want, quarter mile, etc. 60 to 100, I think, is a good uh, benchmark, especially for Saabs. Anything below 60, your wheel spinning, anything above 100, and the thing's falling apart. So, 60 to 100 is what I like to use as a benchmark. Here's the 60 to 100 times, here's one. Here's another. Uh, I also did a 100 to 200 K time. Uh, that is pretty slow, that. Uh, so my scimitar did it in 10. So, yeah, so that will be some good comparisons for when uh, I've got it up and running again. Big thanks to Mark at MB Motorsports for letting me run on the dyno. And cheers for watching. <laughs>